Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 3, Episode 6 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime. Real, really cool detail, look at his fingernails. If we were back in that time using our bare hands to do most of the manual labor, they would all look just like that. And I'm not sure how all the villagers just have perfect nails and perfect hands and they would just have dirt on them all the time because that's basically the kind of life you'd be living. But these, uh, because these astronauts, they're not going through the time of their lives. They literally just came back. Everyone they cared for and loved is gone in stone. And they're thinking about what's going to happen generations from now. And that's, that, that is a lot of foresight that's required. You got to give these people a lot of credit. This is, that, that, that was a pretty solid move. That is super clever. Using the Soyuz capsule as a treasure chest is genius. This is... That, that's really clever. This anime is awesome. Then that, because that thing can resist a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and as long as they don't leave it under the water, which they didn't, it's highly resistant to weathering and erosion. That, that is really clever. I also just realized Senku is talking to his great, 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 great grand cousin? Some, something like that? Because his dad... Yeah, and so he shares DNA with a lot of people in that village. I mean, it's very minimal, if at all measurable. But I wonder how... This is a really cool anime. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Cognitive limit, how many people one can maintain a social relationship with. The actual number is 148. Everyone just rounds up to 150 for the sake of simplicity. But even with that, there are very few people who can actually reach the upper limits of Dunbar's number. Like, if you think about it, can you name 150 people that you've interacted with in the past year? And I don't just mean like you said hi to or like just one or two text messages, like actual genuine social relationships that you can maintain. And that number is not very big. I, I mean, not only that, but it's the people who, like how many people have you talked to in the past month? Right? Because for most people, it's not even approaching 150. There's a lot of stuff with these numbers in terms of production and cooperation and then just efficiency that the military does use as, as, long, as well as, sorry, a lot of other corporations use it as well. And for example, one of them is the square root, I just mean the square root of all employees in an actual company do half the work. Meaning if a company has a size of 100, then 10 people are doing half the work. That seems like a really, really difficult thing to comprehend, but 100 people is still under Dunbar's number. Once you get to much larger corporations, like General Motors is giant, right? Or like any, any large automotive companies or anything that's international, when you get to over 10,000 employees, there's very few people who are actually doing productive work. And... I, it just sounds so hard to say out loud, but that is nevertheless the fact of the matter. And I used to think that if you were a doctor or an engineer or like a Navy SEAL, for example, that that brought you some prestige. And it's, it's, it's almost as if you reached that level, which means you have to have a certain amount of work ethic or, you know, just something that says about your personality and character. That is very wrong. It's completely false. In fact, just because you're an engineer does not mean you have a good work ethic or a positive attitude or even good at working in a team. And like I said, I used to hold Navy SEALs and doctors and engineers in such high regard, but there are assholes and there are horrible people everywhere, regardless of your title, position, or significance. In all walks of life, your profession especially doesn't say anything about your character as a human being. There are a lot of people who are working for the past couple decades and they have done nothing. They have produced nothing and all they do is push papers all day. It, it sounds so like disheartening to hear that, but once you, I mean, I mean, for the people who are watching, if you become engineers in your own right, or once you start going to work for corporate America or corporate whatever country you're watching this from, you will find that not many people are actually engaged in the work they're doing, and sometimes that's to do with the work itself, but most of the time, they're just not doing anything, and they're just getting paid to just sit there and be a number. I did not know that. 
and it's Dr. Stone, so I'm going to assume that it's true. Specifically, th those, really? Those windows are called portholes, and the reason that they have a round shape is to maintain the uh, actual ship's structural integrity. And oceans and seas put an immense pressure on the ship's body, right? Obviously 24-7, as long as it's in the water. And a square or rectangular window are a lot more susceptible to stress, and then they become weak at the corners, and that puts pressure on all the wood and bearings, and that's not good for long voyages. A circular window is tougher, and it also suits the overall design, which is also why in airplanes, all the windows are either circles or ovals. Same principle. When you're actually flying in the air at that high speed, it's a lot of pressure on the outside, so you want to make sure that there's no weak points, so you don't have any square rectangles because those um, endpoints are very weak, but in a circle, it's equally distributed everywhere. <laughs> caused because of an inner ear problem. That's the part of your body which is responsible for balance, and when your body is not moving, but the floor constantly is, like if you're on a boat, for example, or if you're on long car rides, or if you are in an airplane, then your inner ear starts to have a conflict with the outside environment, and the reason your body reacts by throwing up is actually because that's what helps equalize the pressure inside of your ear. It's a long story. Well, we can get a doctor to explain that on one of these episodes. Now, thankfully, my motion sickness is not that bad that I need medication for it, but I've also never been on a boat that ancient. Like, maybe I look like them too. But that medication usually comes in the form of a patch that you kind of put behind your ear, and then it takes a while for this to, you know, kick in. You're supposed to use it, like, hours before you get on a boat or a plane or for a long road trip, whatever is causing that sickness. And part of the reason that, it, yeah, Senku is not kidding. That stuff will kill you, so you need a doctor's prescription. Don't just have a dude with celery hair make something in a lab in a boat and then just say, here, eat this. Not not the best move, because that um, compound can actually pass the blood-brain barrier, the blood-brain barrier, and it can cause hallucinations if you take too much, and if you even go above that, it can cause brain damage and eventually you might die. This might sound like I'm being a little picky, but this episode was more of a filler. We didn't get anything new, per se. I think everything we've been through here, we just sort of already experienced in other episodes, and th that's... Okay, that's not entirely true. But <laughs> this has certainly been a more chill episode for this season, and I don't see anything wrong with that, but I'm really looking forward to these new people, and if they can find the Y-Man, if they can... Th this episode didn't answer any of my questions, so I'm just sort of excited for next week, and in the meantime, I thank you all for watching this video, and I wish you all the best rest of your day.